The Jake Asman Show will begin shortly. Thanks to all these great Patreon members who help support the show. Get your super chats ready. Jake will be here in just a moment. If you love the New York Jets, this is the place to be. And now, the Jake Asman Show. Jets GM Joe Douglas was made available at the league meetings earlier today, and he said a lot about what went into the Jets' offseason strategy, plus provided several key updates on Zach Wilson, Jadavian Clowney, and what the Jets could now do in the NFL draft. We'll talk about that and much more. It's the Jake Asman Show. So let's hit it and get it started. Man, our Jets are primed for a historic season. I'm here because I believe in this team. I believe in Coach Sala. I believe in the direction of Joe Douglas and what the Coach has done the last couple of years. I mean, he's building something special the right way with the right values, you know, the right type of leadership. I'm just here to be the best quarterback I can be, to lead and to inspire the guys around me. We bleed Jet Green each and every day. This is not the same old Jet. We have Garrett Wilson. Let's go. We have Brees Hall. Please subscribe and hit the like button below. Super Jet, baby. Cut the line. We have Sauce Gardner. We have Quinn and Williams. The Jet bandwagon is loaded. Now it's time to talk all things New York Jet. It's the Jake Asman Show. Here we go. Welcome in, everybody. Show number two on the day, and we got a lot to talk about. Earlier, Robert Sala spoke with the media, so you can check out my reaction video to what Sala had to say. And in today's program, let's talk about what the GM had to say. Let's start with this. This picture was making the rounds on the Internet. I think it was Zach Rosenblatt from The Athletic that tweeted it out. One of the funnier pictures I think we get all offseason. So I wanted to start with that because, (laughs) I, I mean, I don't even know what to make of this photo. I just thought it was funny, and it was going viral. So we start with this photo of JD, who's wearing his, you know, sport coat, green quarter zip with the khaki pants. That's our general manager right there, folks. But let's get into some of the comments Douglas made, and then we'll take your calls on the Gus Buster hotline, and we'll get to your super chats as well. Please hit the like button and make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let's first hear from Douglas on the offensive line. So I'm going to pull some clips from his general scrum with the beat reporters. And then I thought Janae Coakley, good friend of the show, did an excellent one-on-one with Douglas where some of his answers to the questions Janae asked him were better than the answers he gave to the actual beat. So we start with a answer he gave to Janae Coakley when Janae asked him about what led into the New York Jets revamping their offensive line with the specific players JD sign. Uh, it brings a lot of experience, a lot of production, uh, a lot of leadership, uh, three great additions to the locker room, three um, great players. Uh, you know, a uh, guy like uh, Tyron Smith, um, one of the best protectors, is, one of the best pass protectors that's ever played the game of football uh, to come here and believe in what we're doing. Uh, trading for Morgan, who, um, you know, uh, I honestly should never let Morgan leave, you know, so bringing him back here and the leadership that he brings, how steady influence he is at the right tackle spot, adding a young explosive player in John Simpson, who whose energy and passion for the game is, it really stands out on tape and then just getting a chance to meet him. Um, you know, we feel good about, about these additions. So I think it's interesting that he brings up the Morgan Moses deal and says, I never should have let him leave. I like that. See, the one thing you could say about Douglas is he's not afraid to admit a mistake. And you go back to even after the year they let Robbie Anderson walk, and he said in hindsight they shouldn't have done that. So I, I've always respected that about Douglas. You know, he's he's at least publicly able to admit a mistake. Now, I'll criticize him to the high heavens about not admitting the Zach Wilson mista- mistake sooner, but, you know, it is what it is. I think it was more of just a miscalculation necessarily than – just pure stubbornness. I think he truly did think Zach Wilson could get better, but it is what it is. We'll talk more about Zach coming up. This was an interesting answer he gave uh, to Janae Coakley of SNY as well. So, of course, when you look at what the Jets have done, they've been able to rebuild their offensive line, add a number two receiver in Mike Williams, 
but they're signing some guys who do have a checkered past in regards to injuries, especially Tyron Smith. And now Mike Williams, he's not injury prone, but he is coming off a serious knee injury. So this was Joe Douglas talking about their process in regards to signing guys who do have an injury history. I mean, it's, it's a lot of discussions and you, you understand there's risks in any, any acquisition. And so you do your best to try to um, mitigate those risks uh, with the way you, you structure contracts. So, um, but those were all discussions that we had um, with, with Woody, with Robert, with our medical staff. So ultimately feel good about the guys we brought in. And I think if you're a Jeff fan, you have to be encouraged by what they've done so far because the contracts are set up where they are trying to mitigate as much risk as possible. And the details of the Mike Williams deal went down yesterday, and only about $8 million of the $15 million is actually guaranteed. So I think you understand where the Jets were coming from with how they structured contracts to put incentives based on playing time, which is important. Because, quite frankly, the Jets have not had enough guys that have actually played on the football field the last couple of years. So the approach has been smart with one-year deals with incentives for playing time. And you got to get you got to get a little lucky. That's the bottom line. Every team needs luck. You know, the Jets have had no luck. Maybe they're due. If you believe in due, the Jets are certainly due with some of the players uh, they've been able to sign. Speaking of Mike Williams, this was Joe Douglas talking about the Mike Williams injury. And I think. It kind of alludes to something Salah said earlier. I'll explain after you hear from Douglas first. Yeah, Mike, Mike's rehabbing the uh, knee injury. I know Robert talked about uh, mm-hmm. the timeline a little bit this morning. I would say that's accurate. Um, like talk list to probably start training camp kind of thing? I would say he's not going to be ready for the start of training camp. Okay. Um, but, again, um, there's – there's a lot of time, so we'll see how the rehab progresses. There's there's a lot of checkpoints to hit, but um, we do feel confident that he's going to be ready for the year. So they think he'll be ready for the year. It's the same timeline as Brees Hall, is what Robert Sala said earlier, right? He'll probably start the year on the pup list. He'll probably, by the end of training camp, start taking some reps in seven-on-sevens and then maybe 11-on-11s the last week. And he'll probably be on a pitch count to start the year, which means the Jets need another receiver. And I think it's a combo of free agency and the draft for them to do it. And when Robert Sala said they will welcome Corey Davis back with open arms, I can't think of a better option for the Jets on a cheap one-year-like deal than Corey Davis because he has a very similar physique, body type, however you want to describe it, to Mike Williams. So I think the perfect depth signing for the Jets is Corey Davis. And we know the story earlier this offseason, unverified, by the way, that Corey Davis prefers to go to a team closer to where he's from. You know, maybe he left football last year. We still don't know exactly why. You know, the rumblings are it was a family situation. So we wish Corey Davis all the best with whatever he was going through. But if there's not a market for him and the Jets clearly would like him back, you sign Corey Davis to a one-year deal. And ideally, the Jets' depth chart at receiver is Garrett Wilson, Mike Williams, Corey Davis, Gibson, a draft pick, and I guess Lazard. That's how I would look at it. And honestly, if you kind of piece together what the head coach said with what the GM said, I think there's a strong chance that Corey Davis is still on the plans for the Jets. I really do believe that. It's not like he's had, you know, a huge market to this point. So, you know, you hear Mike Williams not going to be ready for the start of training camp. He'll be ready for week one. Corey Davis would make some sense. That's what I took from those answers earlier today in regards to Mike Williams and how it relates uh, potentially to the Jets bringing Corey back. Now, more from Joe Douglas. This was Joe Douglas specifically on the latest with King Lowski's favorite player, Zach Wilson. I think there's been a lot of communication um, uh, you know, since we've given we've given his agent permission to seek a trade. Uh, we, there's been a lot of communication back and forth about uh, what's going on, and, and I think ultimately you're trying to walk the line of – Putting, uh, getting Zach to a good situation while also uh, make sure the team's in a good situation. So, you know, that's that's kind of the line we're, we're walking right now. Um, we don't have anything close to being done, but I think we're just working together to do it. You know what that answer is? We don't want to just cut him and let him sign with any team because we're going to try and get someone to take the contract off our hands. And obviously, no one wants Zach Wilson. That's obvious. Because he is still on the Jets, and he's been available since, if we're being honest, since December. 
<laughs> so, look, they got their work cut out for them there. If they could get anything for Zach Wilson, I, I, I'd i be shocked. I'd give Douglas a lot of credit for that. You know, there's some saying, well, just hold on to him. They promised him they're going to move him. I don't see that. But you do wonder, what's the deadline when they would cut him? Because I don't think there's a deal for the Jets to make. I don't. I think if there was a deal, it would have happened by now. You know, you mean to tell me after the draft, if a team didn't take a quarterback on day three, maybe they come back to the Jets and say, all right, Zach Wilson will take him? I, I guess. You know, the draft's in a month. Are we really going to have Zach Wilson on this team for another month? I guess, in theory, the answer could be yes. You know, OTAs, minicamp, all that, that doesn't start till after the draft. So there's time. But to me, it's one of those things where they don't want to just give them away, which is why Douglas gave you that answer. It's got to make sense for us, and it's got to make sense for Zach. What makes sense for Zach is he gets released and could sign anywhere. That's what his agent wants. That's what Zach Wilson wants. Obviously, I think that's what the Jets might end up having to do, but I don't think we're there just yet. But it's not a surprise they haven't been able to trade Zach Wilson. And also, there was a story from Mike Florio out today that somehow, you know, Woody Johnson is hesitant to let the Jets trade Zach. That could not be further from the truth. This is the same owner who publicly came out at the league meetings and said, we did not have a backup quarterback. We need a backup quarterback. He said it at NFL Honors, excuse me, not league meetings. He said it the Thursday before the Super Bowl. We did a live show reacting to those comments from Woody. It was also in that same media scrum where he basically put a playoff mandate on the entire regime, which, by the way, should be the case. No issue with that. They got to win this year. We all understand that. But the idea that Woody Johnson is holding up a Zach Wilson trade, are you kidding me? Woody can't wait to get rid of this guy. The problem is no one wants him. Now, I'm sure Woody doesn't want to pay the salary, but you don't have a choice. I mean, it is what it is. You signed Tyrod Taylor. You gave him the second highest guarantee among backups, right behind Sam Darnold, which made sense. You needed a backup. Backup to the Jets is more valuable than backup to, like, any other team in the league, given the Jets' circumstance. The age of their quarterback, the injury he suffered, what backfired already last season. No one's complaining about the Tyrod Taylor signing. It was necessary and a good move by this general manager. But it's not surprising they haven't been able to trade Zach Wilson. See, the Zach Wilson truthers want you to believe that somehow he's this great quarterback and that the Jets have wronged him. But now 31 other teams are telling you he stinks. We don't want him. Mac Jones went for a draft capital. Justin Fields went for draft capital. They can't get anything for Zach Wilson. And I'll tell you what, if Zach Wilson was not going into the last year of his deal, I think they'd be able to move him. But there's too much tape on him now. See, Trey Lance got moved because he barely played and had an extra year on his rookie deal. Zach's going into the final year of his contract. It makes it harder to move him. Because the team only has him as their quote-unquote backup for a year. No one's picking up the fifth-year option. And then you really think anyone wants to pay Zach Wilson $5.5 million? No. So they're going to have to eat some of the money or attach a draft pick. And Florio's report was, oh, the Jets have had offers for Zach Wilson, but they're waiting for something better. You know what the offers for Zach Wilson probably were? Hey, will you eat all the money and we'll take them off your hands? And the Jets are like, why would we do that for a seventh-round pick? So it's posturing. Do I think eventually maybe the price comes down and the Jets are like, we'll just move them for whatever? Sure. But I think it ends up either being a straight-up release or the Jets are probably paying, you know, four of the five million just to get like a seventh pick so they could say they traded them. But you're not saving much on your cap when you do that. So I, I still think this ends with him being released. But if, if Joe Douglas could get something for him, God bless him. I'd love it. Let's get back now to the roster building process from this general manager. This was Joe Douglas talking about how what they have done in free agency, how that potentially impacts what they do with the number 10 pick. Well, I think um, this, this is an unbelievable line class. It's an unbelievable uh, class at, a, at quite a few positions. But I think uh, where we're at now, we have great flexibility um, to go in any direction that, that we see uh, is best for us moving forward. So um, I think it, it, it opens, door, opens the door to a lot of possibilities at 10. Look, the bottom line is this. When you look at 
the Jets' options, that's exactly what he should be saying. Now, I still think offensive line is certainly on the table for the Jets at 10. Forget trading that, trading back, trading up, whatever. Stick and pick O-line at 10, I think, is absolutely still on the table. But unlike last year, where it was so obvious what the Jets' need was, you can't say that this year. So I, I think the Jets, to this GM's credit, have put themselves in the spot where they do have flexibility. I'm not a Bowers boy, but I, I understand the pick if they made that pick, for example. If they took a receiver at 10, even though my preference is still offensive line, I, I, I understand the, uh, the thought process behind it. Whereas last year, the Will McDonald pick didn't make sense. Now, he might end up being a really good player. He has to. But they pigeonholed themselves last year. They're not in that spot. We They, they have five legitimate starting offensive linemen right now. Five legitimate starting offensive linemen. We could not say that a year ago. We didn't know who the Jets' five offensive linemen were in mid-August a year ago. We had no idea. So they, they have put themselves in a spot where they do have positional flexibility. Now, Douglas didn't rule out taking a quarterback at 10. That's what he's supposed to say. This is smokescreen season. We can move up. We can move down. We can take this player. We can take that player. That's what you're supposed to say. And, it, and he's going to say publicly it's best player available because that's what every GM says. But they do legitimately have flexibility, which is encouraging. And one other point on the offensive line additions, I like how Joe Douglas noted that Simpson is young, ascending, and brings toughness and nastiness. While not obviously directly taking a shot at Lakin Tomlinson, that was the biggest crit criticism we as fans had for Lakin. So th this offensive line has been revamped. Now, there's guys with injury risk, and Morgan Moses is 33 on a one-year deal, but they do have options. And then here is uh, Joe Douglas talking about Jadavian Clowney. We heard that the visit went well. This was Joe Douglas talking about that visit. Uh, Jadavian visit was outstanding. It was uh, spent about an hour um, just talking with him in my office and getting to know him as a person. And it was a it was a very productive visit. And just him being around the building, getting getting a chance to uh, to get to know him, and um, having brought in a few uh, few teammates that he played with last year um, that all that all think the world of him. So uh, it was good to have him in. Where did things stand with him? Like, um, there's, there's no news to report on that. We're, um, um, we've, we've got a plan coming back, and um, if, if again, if uh, if the opportunity presents itself, we're you know we're going to be ready. You know, not just on Jadavian, but if any player that we feel can come in and help us, we're going to we're, we're going to be ready to add to it. So look, ultimately signing Jadavian Clowney, I still think is more likely than not because I think there's mutual interest on both sides. But I don't think just given Clowney's history, just kind of knowing what he's done in free agency the last couple of years, it's a foregone conclusion that they're going to just, you know, give him the bag and get it done. I think it could take some time here. But you heard the Clowney camp put out there that they thought it went well. Douglas confirming that it went well. There's clearly a fit, and now you wonder when a deal could be made. One more from Joe Douglas, and then we got some Woody quotes here about Zach Wilson being an asset. I'm not just going to give him away. Even though Woody Johnson is the same guy, oh, by the way, who said, we need a backup. So which is it, Woody? I'll, I'll give you some thoughts on that as I'm seeing these quotes come in here in a moment. Uh, but one more from Douglas. This was him being asked about losing Bryce Huff in free agency. Yeah, you never um, you, you never feel good about losing a guy that uh, that came here as an undrafted free agent. Just a real feel good story and developed into into a, a really good pass rusher. Um, you know, ultimately, you can't keep everybody um, on the team. But um, you know, we felt like we what we did this offseason was in the best interest of of the Jets. But I, you know, I'm, my hat goes off to Bryce. He's a great player development story, and uh, he's going to be successful in Philadelphia. We can't keep everybody. Well, a year from now, we better be getting extensions done with Sauce Gardner, Garrett Wilson, et cetera. And by the way, I don't think anyone asked Douglas about this today. How about a DJ Reed extension, a Michael Carter extension? How about that? Maybe that's something that would happen post-draft. Now, I'm seeing some comments here. From Woody Johnson. We were talking about Zach Wilson earlier, and there's a report that, you know, Woody is holding up deals 
Woody Johnson said, quote, if we don't trade him, we're going to keep him. Johnson went on to say he believes Wilson would benefit from a change in scenery if they can't find a trade partner. This will get interesting. That's from Brian Costello. Let's see. There was another quote about Zach. Uh, Jets are not going to just release him, so they view him as a valuable asset. Woody Johnson said that only Joe Douglas can veto trades. He denies that he has done that. I mean, it's all semantics at the end of the day. You know, maybe at, at some point they don't just release him, but they eat some of the money to facilitate a trade, and it's like, technically, you traded him, but what did you really get? I could see that, but the the idea that the Jets are just going to keep Zach Wilson and go into training camp with him as the third quarterback, when you had Robert Salas say they plan to add another quarterback, I don't see it. So, I think it's a semantics game right now with these comments from Woody. Now, now all of a sudden, Woody, I'm seeing a quote here from the owner saying, well, you know, there's a reason why we drafted him second overall. He's got the skill. He could do everything. You're the same guy who said we need a backup. We didn't have one last year. It, you know, the uh, toothpaste is out of the tube, Woody. You can't try and inflate Zach Wilson's value when you've already ripped him publicly. So I'm not buying it, folks. I, I think this is all semantics. I do not think there's any scenario where Zach Wilson's on this team. I don't believe it. We'll open it up to your comments and questions. Super Chats will cut the line. A lot of people want in on the conversation. Today's Jake Asman show is presented by my friends at Copper John's Beard Company. Folks, if you want the finest beard products or mustache products, you have to head to copperjohnsbeard.com and use promo code Jake20 so you can get 20% off. Whether you're someone who uses their beard oils or their awesome beard balm to touch up and make your beard smell nice, feel nice, and look nice. They have something for everyone at Copper John's. They also have soaps, colognes, and if you're someone like me who when they shave, they break out sometimes, try Copper John's aftershave. It works. And everything about Copper John's that I personally love, just the, the material, how it smells, I'm telling you, I can't recommend it enough for all my fellow beard rockers out there, beard growers. CopperJohnsBeard.com. Promo code Jake20. You guys have heard me talk about Copper Johns for a while. Now, the founder of the company, Tyson Allred, diehard fan of the Jets. It's a small family-owned business. So by supporting me and and supporting Copper Johns, you're supporting a fellow Jet fan. So check it out, CopperJohnsBeard.com. Go to their website, look at their products. You're going to be impressed and purchase something with that promo code Jake20 to get 20% off. Let's get to some calls. King Lowski's first up on our show. What's up, King? Jake, my brother, Jake, my brother. It's always a blessing and an honor seeing you, my brother. But I just needed to get some things off my chest. Now, I don't want to misdirect my energy. Now, <laughs> I, 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 I want to I get this right. Has Joe Douglas been receiving calls or has he been making calls about the child? You know, he didn't say. All he said was, you know, they've had productive conversations with Zach's agent, but he didn't specifically say if teams are calling him or is he or he's called teams. My guess is, based on how this has worked in the past, the agent for Zach Wilson is calling teams saying, what will it take to get my client on your team, trying to facilitate a trade that way? Okay. So, I, I, I because I was real disturbed this morning because – I woke up this morning, I washed my face, I brushed my teeth, I put on some of that Copper John, some of that uh, Algar, uh, uh, what's the name of it? Um, Algalar Code, I believe. Yeah, it's very, very, very good. But um, I saw the reports on X saying that there was talks about the child, about dealing with him, okay? So, and then before you got on the show, I seen a report from Bleacher Report saying that there was not uh, what Joe Douglas said. So I'm going to need J.D. to do me a favor, okay? I don't know if you're receiving or you making calls, son. But, J.D., I'm going to need you to get on the phone with all 31 other teams, okay? And you make a call and you tell them what the, what, what's the best you got. What's the best you got? And you take the best you got and you get his ass out of here, okay? I don't want to hear nothing about what value he got. He ain't got no damn value. What value? What the hell are you talking about? 
you 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 care you care about what what his feelings put him in the best position. I don't give a damn what the hell his best position is. You get his ass out of here. Three years of mediocrity. You get his ass the hell out of here. I don't want to hear that shit. You call all 31 other teams and you say, what's the best you got? If you got to eat half of it, I'll eat 250. If I got to eat 250, if I if you got an eighth round pick, I'll take an eighth round damn pick. You get his ass out of here, man. J-E-T-S, just, just, just. <laughs> King, I appreciate you, man. I, I, I wouldn't worry. He's not going to be on the team. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. They, I, I think this is all semantics at this point. You know, we're not just going to give him away. Woody Johnson can't call Zach Wilson an asset after he trashed him at the NFL Honors two months ago. <laughs> There's just no way. No way. I wouldn't worry. I, I, I think it's one of those where they're not in any rush to deal him. And honestly, you know what? Maybe the Jets are pissed at Zach. What happened at the end of the season when you know he reportedly refused to play? They're like, why are we helping you? We're not in any rush to get rid of you. You stunk. We'll do it on our own time. We paid you $35 million guaranteed. We don't need to just cut you because you're a charity case. Eventually we might have to, but if we're if we could somehow convince a team that you're worth something, we're gonna we're gonna do it. We're gonna exhaust all our options. I think that's what's happening here. But trust me, I don't think there's any shot, any scenario where the Jets start training camp and Zach Wilson's on the team. I don't buy it. Reading from Rich Samini's Twitter account on Woody Johnson's comments on Zach Wilson. Says Wilson needs a change of scenery but calls him an asset. Says they will keep him if they can't trade him. Denies report that said he rejected trade offer. Not much to say on Rodgers slash VP. Says they're concentrating on football, football, and football. No specific expectation for 24 season. Less fiery than he was at NFL Honors. It doesn't behoove Woody to come out and like demand things now. He said what he said. Everyone understands what the expectation is. So I'm fine with it. Now, the VP stuff, I thought Douglas had a funny answer on that when he was asked about it. He said, I hope Aaron feels like he has some candidates for director of Homeland Security and secretary of the defense now that we fortified the O-line. But no, I mean, when all that was getting out there, I was focused on nothing but improving the team. I didn't take him very seriously. Was not on the Jets' bingo card. Yeah, I mean, we still going to make this a story? Once again, I'm just laughing at Woody Johnson saying that they're not just going to release that because he's a valuable asset. When he said, what, seven weeks ago, whenever the NFL League, uh, the NFL honor ceremony was in Vegas, that we did not have a backup quarterback on the team. Tube paste is out of the tube, Woody. It is. Sorry. It's too late. New channel member, NYJ Today, has become an as maniac. Welcome aboard, NYJ Today. Appreciate you signing up. Let's get back to your calls right now. Let's go to Rob the Jet Fan from Glenhead. Hello, Rob. Hey, buddy. How are you? What's up, Rob? Um, I love when uh, Lowski calls uh, Zach the child. It's <laughs> hysterical. You got to love it. You got to love it. But you're right, Jake. I mean, we did uh, Nicole Hartman a favor. And not only did we trade him back to the Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs, how did he repay us for doing that? Yeah, I mean, and, and you know what? Maybe it cost him a job in the league because no one signed a Miko Hardman right now. He, he, You know, he deserves it. I'm sorry to say it, but he deserves everything that he gets. Too bad, you know. Next time you keep your mouth shut, you don't leak out information. I mean, it's like betting on a sport, the same sport that you're playing for. You don't do shit like that. But a couple of things I want to touch upon. I'm going to start off with uh, Nick Wrong. Um, oh, boy, does that guy. That guy, I, I'm sorry to say, he irritates me the way he looks. I, I just don't like the way he looks. And the crap that comes out of his mouth is 10 times worse. I mean, he's like just sitting there, pure negativity, Jake. 
It was the same guy who said the Cowboys were going to win the Super Bowl, that they had all the talent. And the Cowboys, unfortunately, seem to choke every year because they do have a lot of talent. But, I mean, I don't take nothing to heart to what that guy says. And the other thing was with, um, obviously, uh, Curly who calls in with Salah. I mean, I don't understand what people expect Salah to say. I mean, he hasn't said anything terrible that, oh, I want him fired now. Did you hear what he said? He, like, really annoys me. I mean, what did he say? I, I actually think, to the large extent, Salah is a good speaker. I mean, uh, I mean, we had gays once upon a time. We had bowls once upon a time. Did you hear those guys speak? Uh, they weren't too good. But, I mean, it's like well, people... Yeah, I, mean, Rob, I, I think what a coach says is oftentimes very overrated. Like, And I, I won't even use the Jets as an example, but we talked about Nick Sirianni earlier. Eagles fans love the guy with his brash demeanor and his personality when they were winning going to the Super Bowl. And then this past year, they're falling apart. And, oh, he's, he's not focused on the things that matter. And, oh, he's, he, he's putting a target on his team's back. It was the same thing with Rex and the Jets. Like, when you win, it's all great. When you lose, it gets used against you. But no one had an issue with Belichick's antics with the media when they were winning. So, no. to me, it's all about can the Jets win this year? And if they win, Robert Sala will be well-liked. If they lose, he's going to be out of a job. Like, it's very simple what, what has to no. happen this year. You're right. You're right. I mean, when they win, nobody says a word. I mean, Belichick could be a butthole. And he, he sucks in interviews, um, but people will let it go because they won all those Super Bowls, even though a lot of it was because of their QB. Let's be honest here. But um, another thing, it, it sounded a little bit encouraging with Clowney. I, I think we're at least in the race of, of obtaining him. I'm not saying that we're definitely going to get him, but it seems like, I mean, we're not totally out of that. I mean, it seemed optimistic that JD would step up a little bit more if need be to get Clowney. So uh, I'm optimistic about that, Jake. Um, where I'm going to push back on you, I'm sorry, buddy, um, is the uh, Corey Davis. I, I don't really want him. I mean, he's going two years of not playing. And when he one played. Year. One, one or, year. All right, so a full year that he didn't play at all. I mean, the guy dropped a lot of passes. He's a guy who catches with his chest. He doesn't catch with his hands. I, I don't think he has really good hands. Yeah, I mean, where if, are you finding a better receiver? I, I'm with you if, like, Corey Davis was, like, their big receiver move. Like, I, I was never on board with that. That's why I think by Mike Williams. Yeah, but I think you could do both. I think you could sign Corey and you could still draft somebody. What are you going to give him, like, one year at $6 million? Yeah, I, I think that's probably a, a fair estimate. Somewhere I, between five to seven million with incentives. I mean, he was going to be twelve last year, and they were going to ask him to take a pay cut. Yeah, Lazard is that bad that this is what we have to do, Jake? You know, well, he, and, he's better than Lazard, and like you look at the options out there, like you know, I I feel like Corey Davis, who put up some numbers with lack of good quarterback play with the Jets, I think he'd put up pretty good numbers with Roger Stone of the ball. I guess, I guess. He's I a guess good blocker, know. and he and he kind of fills the Mike Williams role until Mike Williams is definitely ready. Like, Mike he's Williams ready. is not going to be ready for the start of training camp. Corey Davis would be. I hope he's ready for day one, at least. I mean, I hope it's not going to be one of those things that he, he misses the first three or four games, Jake. I hope not. Well, they said he'll be ready for, for week one. Okay, good, good, good. All right, I hear you, buddy. I mean, like, you know, we push back, but then we, we listen and, you know, and all, all is good in Jetland. J-E-T-S. Jets, 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 baby. <laughs> Rob, I appreciate it, man. Davis is like your fourth receiver is my point. I still want them to draft someone. And if you signed Corey Davis, that wouldn't prohibit you from still taking one of the big three in the draft or Brian Thomas Jr. or Xavier Worthy or whoever. But I, I think the Jets should try and get as many weapons as they can for Aaron Rodgers. Make it as easy as possible for him, not harder. And like Corey Davis in a one-year deal, there's nothing wrong with that. My issue with Corey Davis was like, well, that was like their big offseason move at receiver. That, I was like, no way. But on a one-year deal, like, you could do a lot worse. Story Lynn writes in with a super chat. We revamped the offensive line. We signed Mike Williams for a reason. 
Salah and Douglas are on the hot seat for a reason. They failed Zach. Cesspool equals Jets. Enough. He stinks. Can we stop? They failed Zach. Why does no one want him if they failed him? Right? People wanted Sam Darnold. The Jets got a second round pick for Sam Darnold. Why is that? Same situation. Three years in the league. Three years as a starter. Need to make a decision on the fifth year option. Jets got a second round pick for Sam Darnold. Why can't they get anything for Zach Wilson's storyline? You tell me. Jets failed Darnold. Teams were interested in Sam. How come no one wants Zach Wilson if the Jets failed him? Explain that. Maybe because they didn't fail him. Was he in the perfect situation? No. But neither was Justin Fields. He at least showed you something this past year. He went for something because he showed more than Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson has shown you nothing but what? A good second and third quarter versus the Chiefs? A good second half versus the Texans this year? A couple other games here or there, moments, throws we could point to. Statistically, he's one of the worst quarterbacks that has ever started the amount of games he started. So, no, Zach Wilson failed Zach Wilson, unfortunately. And the reason why Salah and Douglas are on the hot seat is because of Zach Wilson. This team would have made the playoffs if they had a better backup. That's on the GM more than the coach. If Aaron Rodgers stayed healthy this past year, they're probably in the playoffs. They had to revamp the offensive line because it wasn't good enough. But their defense was. Their running game was with Brace. Garrett Wilson has gone over 1,000 yards the last two years. And we're going to say the Jets failed Zach Wilson? If your quarterback needs to have an all-pro on you know at every offensive line spot, elite receivers, an elite defense, elite special teams, just to be decent, he's not good. That's the bottom line. He's the second pick in the draft. When's he going to step up and make guys better? That's what they do. That's what they're supposed to do. He's never done it. So I don't want to hear that the Jets somehow failed Zach Wilson. Was every situation perfect for him? No. It's never going to be perfect for every quarterback. The good ones overcome it. ISU writes in, Woody's quotes are damage control from when he let his real feelings out. Pretty much. You can't call Zach Wilson an asset, Woody, when you bashed him six weeks ago and you said, we need a backup. We didn't have one last year. You don't get to walk that back. Teams aren't dumb. That's no go, says Woody should probably just not talk at this point. I mean, if he's asked anything about Zach Wilson, it's a moot point. We know how he truly feels. Gary's up next on the show. What's up, Gary? What's going on, Jake? Um, I'm a, I'm a little fired up. Um, here's one question I, I think someone should ask Joe Douglas that he'd never been asked. What did you miscalculate so badly on Zach Wilson? What did you see? And how do you give Jet fans confidence that you won't repeat that mistake in the future? Why does no one ever ask him that? I mean, it's not like an okay draft pick. If this isn't, you know, a guy that was mid, this is one of the worst draft picks ever. And no one ever presses him on it. Like, why did you do this? Explain to us what you saw. Because well, he's been asked about it. I mean, and then Salah had the line last year about he'll keep those pro- you know, those conversations private and what they would do over from that draft. I mean, it's- but what what's the benefit of saying it publicly? You know, to see. I mean, uh, for for Joe Douglas. I mean, I, yeah. Explain to us. Explain to, to to the fan base what you miscalculated and how you're going to do your job better in the future. Well, and let me ask you this. Pulls a horrible timeout. You question him on it, right? Well, let, let me ask you this though. I mean, the Niners miscalculate on Trey Lance. Did the Bears miscalculate on Justin Fields? Did the Patriots miscalculate on Mac Jones? Like, it's a very inexact science. Like, it's it's probably the hardest thing in sports to get right drafting a franchise quarterback. I disagree hundred percent. But let's let's. Let how me, do you let do, make, But tell me how you disagree with that. Like, it's like, not as hard. There was nothing Zach Wilson ever did in three years that people. I I asked every Jet fan, every Zach Wilson truth I've ever met this question: Which game at BYU did he show you that he's going to be an above average quarterback in the NFL? None of them ever have an answer. So who is your who is your guy? So who is your guy from that class? That because they needed a I quarterback. Say, you don't need a quarterback. You need a good football player. That's what I'm saying about Brack Bowers. You need a good football player. No, if you would have just Gary, out Donald's you need a and, Gary. You need a quarterback. You cannot win in the NFL without a good quarterback. You there can't. was no good quarterbacks in that draft. You can't. You can't make something that's not there. Okay. So look, your the only, your take three years ago was none of these guys are any good. 
take I, I absolutely none of those guys are first round quarterbacks. Justin Fields, I would look at in the first. Trevor Lawrence is mid. He's going to be really good half the time, really bad half the time. Mac Jones is a backup quarterback. Zach Wilson is a seventh round pick, right? Same thing with Kenny Pickett. That guy can't play in the NFL. And I'm telling you right now, Caleb Williams is a third round pick. You think Justin Fields holds on to the ball too long? Way do you get a loan of Caleb Williams, right? So let me ask you this. You it's realize that you realize that the Jets were one of many teams that had Zach Wilson as their second ranked. I can't explain. You're asking the wrong person why they would do that. I have no idea, right? I, I, they, give me the game at BYU where you said that's the dude. W- which game? Give me like three games where you said, "Oh my God, that 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 guy is like next level. We got to get him number two. It doesn't exist. But your your whole your whole point doesn't make any sense because how, they need because they needed a quarterback. So like, what was there your wasn't plan? One take. There wasn't one to draft that was any good. So take Jalen Waddle, let Donald play out his contract, and then you're done with Donald. You're done with bad contracts at quarterback, and then you can look to the future. You don't draft a bigger problem. Look, look to got- the future. What was the future? The next year where Kenny Pickett was the only quarterback that went in the first round. So your idea is no matter how bad he is, you just have to draft the quarterback. No matter They obviously say. didn't think he was bad. There were Explain many Explain to me why not- you think that. That's my whole point. Explain to me what there you were- saw in Zach Gary. Wilson. Gary, there were multiple teams, not just the Jets, that had Zach. Wilson I'm not concerned about multiple teams. Right now, I'm concerned about Joe Douglas. Well, you Joe should, Douglas- you act like this. You're, you're the you're the quarterback guru, Gary. You're the quarterback whisperer. You see all with quarterbacks. Better but better there's... resume than Joe Douglas, I would submit. Let me ask you this question. Oh though. my God. I I think <laughs> I think that's not, not not debatable. Let me ask you this question. I think Joe Milton has a bunch of upside. If I took him number two overall, would that be an issue? Yes, because yeah, okay. Joe Milton is infinitely better and was way better in college than Zach Wilson. But Stop you just it. said taking Stop his it. numbers. He well, wasn't. Okay. There's it's, not one person on the planet that would rank Joe Milton as a better prospect coming out of school than Zach Wilson. Okay, so let me ask you this you question. You realize the Niners but, and the great Kyle Shanahan, they reportedly were trying to trade up to get Zach Wilson, and the Jets said no. That's great for them. And then, then, then they can answer the question. But, but, they but he's do supposed it. to be the the best guy at evaluating quarterbacks, and he got it wrong. My point Says is, who? I don't, I don't know that to be true. Like, that's he the, got, that's the he, he got a great deal in round that's, seven, but at round that's seven. The, Gary, that's the I, perception. That's why I'm telling you. I hear what the reality is. Okay. I hear what the actual reality is. Gary, your reality is I know all when it comes to quarterback evaluation. I've never been wrong. My point to you is the, t- the professionals who evaluate this stuff, they get it wrong often because it's hard. So you're killing Joe Douglas for something that, yeah, it's a big mistake. But all the other quarterbacks that went after were mistakes. And it's not like the Jets just plucked Zach Wilson and no one thought he was going to go that high. This isn't the Giants taking Daniel Jones at six when people were like, what? Many people, including the Niners, had Zach Wilson ranked that high. The Eagles had Zach Wilson ranked that high. It's an inexact science. But you lose the argument at the beginning before you started ranting and raving when you say a quarterback doesn't matter. You need a quarterback. You can't win without one. Look at the Steelers, how good their roster's been. They're not winning. Why? They don't have a quarterback. You can't win without one. Name in the team that's going to win a Super Bowl without a quarterback. Obviously, I agree with your premise. You don't take someone that high if you don't think they're good. They thought Zach was going to be good. That's the point I'm trying to make to you. You didn't. You ended up being right. But the Jets were one of many teams that thought Zach Wilson was going to be a good pick. It didn't work. Neither did anyone else that went behind them. And that was a, th- a highly regarded quarterback class. Sometimes you get a quarterback class like 2021 that doesn't work out. Other times, maybe you get a quarterback class like 2020 that features Joe Burrow, Herbert, Tua, Jalen Hurts in the second round. That's the opposite of 2021. We'll see what this year's quarterback class ends up being. It's thought to be another really good QB class. We don't know. That's the point. It's a crapshoot. Well, let me guess, Gary. You thought Patrick Mahomes from Texas Tech was going to be the best quarterback in the league. Like, it's hard, man. It is a crapshoot. I'll never criticize Douglas for taking a quarterback. My criticism of the general manager is sticking with that guy and not admitting the mistake earlier. Or not getting a better backup going in the last season or then after Rodgers went down. That's the issue. Taking Zach Wilson, I mean, it is what it is. But please don't try and tell me that Joe Milton's a better quarterback prospect than Zach Wilson. 
coming out. That's just not true. Super Chat coming in. This one is from Johnny P, who writes, it was Washington and the USC games from a sophomore season that sold GMs on Zach. Yeah, he also played Tennessee well, too, I believe. And he had a great 2020. I know it was an easier schedule because it was a COVID year. But you can't watch Zach Wilson and not see a kid who's got immense talent. The physical ability is there. I think it's between the ears. That's been his problem. Super chat from Edward. Is it remotely possible to restructure the Zach deal? No. I mean, if they cut him at any point, they carry the $11 million dead cap hit. He's not taking a pay cut. Robert writes in with a super chat. Zach never cared going apple picking on the buy. See, this I think is unfair. All right, don't be Sean Morash with that nonsense. It's his bye week. He's allowed to spend time with his family. They were four and three at the bye. Can we stop? Or actually, sorry, they were three and three at the bye, and then they beat the Giants to get the four and three after the bye. Zach Wilson's problems were not because he spent time with his family during the bye week in Utah. That's ridiculous. The problems were he just wasn't a good quarterback. It happens. Kenu, up next on our show. What's up, Kenu? Jake, I can't believe it's 2024 and people are still talking about we should have kept Sam for one more year. I honestly, I envy you because I would not be able to listen to phone calls like that all day, every day. I'm not going to lie to you. You know but, what? I, I, at least I've somehow turned it into making a living doing it, Kino. <laughs> right. That's awesome. But anyways, I don't understand how anyone could be upset with the general manager today. I, I, I want to give the general manager a hug today. I think he kind of said... The quiet part out loud when they asked him about Zach, I can't remember who asked him, but they were kind of like, um, is there any scenario where he's back on team next year? And he was like, well, we're still like early in our process. He's pretty much telling you like they're not early in their process. If, if they can't trade him, they're going to cut him. So great point. I mean, Douglas was mm -hmm. asked about potentially having to keep Zach as you bring up and he sidestepped it completely with that answer you're alluding to. So yeah. what he could say, whatever he wants to try and restore the value he destroyed when he came out six weeks ago and said, we need a backup. We didn't have one. But, like, right. we all understand what the situation is. If Zach Wilson had any value, he would have been traded. They traded Correct. Darnold at this time three years ago when it was clear they were moving on from him because he had value. Right. They had mm -hmm. no value for Zach Wilson. That's why he's still on the roster. Yeah. One last thing I wanted to add. I think there's something flying that, that Jets fans aren't really talking about. There's not much discord about – or discourse about, excuse me. Um, the fact that he filled all the major holes pretty much in free agency gives him all the leverage at number 10. So before, it was very obvious that our number one hole was offensive tackle. So if we wanted to move up to get a guy to like five or six, whatever team we'd call, they would say, hey, we know you want Joe Alt. We're going to take him. If you want him, you got to overpay for the draft pick. But now it's flipped because we've filled all the major holes. So I don't want to say it becomes a luxury pick, but if someone at like 15 or 16 wants to come down, and let's say they're looking to get Drake May, who's still on the board at 10 somehow. We would say, hey, we, we don't have any real holes. We want to draft Drake May. So if you really want him, you got to overpay for our draft pick. That's one of the main things that, like, Joe Douglas, after filling the offensive line holes and the number two receiver hole and the defensive tackle hole, like, now, now no one knows what the Jets are going to do at 10. So they have a lot of flexibility, and they have the leverage in any draft pick or any draft trade they want to make if they want to go up or down because no one really knows what we're going to do now. They have flexibility, Kenu. It's a great point, and it's something they didn't have last year, and I think it maybe opens the door for a, a trade. Hopefully, in my opinion, a trade back, but we can't rule out a trade up. If they love one of these receivers, and a Dunze, let's say, maybe starts to slide a little, they could get to eight and get them. Maybe they would do it. Maybe they would do it. We don't know. Hennessy, Super Chat says, he writes in, you guys really expect GMs to hit 100% on their draft picks and free agent signings. You can't even win your fantasy draft leagues. Relax. This is what I would like to say to Gary. R-E-L-A-X. Relax. All right. Take it easy. Yeah, I I I'm with you, Hennessy. Look, Joe Douglas needs to be better. We understand that. No GM bats 1,000. Howie Roseman's one of the best GMs in football. He took Jalen Rager over Justin Jefferson. He took Wentz, but guess what? He found Jalen Hurts. Like, no one bats a 1,000. The good GMs are able to fix their mistakes. Joe Douglas, I think, has had a good offseason in regards to fixing his mistakes. Bringing Moses back is a great trade. Fixing a mistake of letting him go in the first place in hindsight. Getting Tyron Smith. 
getting Simpson, Mike Williams, retooling the D-line, potentially still adding Clowney to it. They've had a good offseason. Making sure you keep your kicker and your punter to solidify that. The good GMs can fix their mistakes. Getting Tyrod Taylor may be the biggest mistake they're trying to fix. Backup quarterback. So while he is not perfect, he at least has shown you the ability to make shrewd moves so far. Now this head coach has got to win. And he's got to learn from his mistakes. That's the whole key. The big fella is up next. What's up, big fella? What's up, Jake? How's it going? What's up, man? Hey, you know, we really didn't have to draft a quarterback when Zach was there. All we had to do is trade for Jameis Winston, you know, and, every, <laughs> you know, everything would be everything would be great. I, I, I love Gary's passion, but man, his his takes on quarterbacks leave a lot to be desired. In my opinion. Next time he's on and I'm a, I'm in the I'm in the I'm in the back and he starts ranting about Joe Milton. Put me on, please. Put me you. on, please, because people in Tennessee don't even like Joe Milton. They they wanted him gone. There's a reason why he was there for six years in college. If he was good, he would have been out three years ago. But anyway, getting back to uh, Sala and his conference because I, I rewatched the show. Uh, they said that they were looking for a higher like to hire like a supervisor for the offensive coordinator, but nobody ca- but nobody came. So he's rolling with. Uh, Hackett and Downing is that? Do you believe that? I think they tried to hire a senior level uh, assistant, and I think the people they wanted. I know one of them was Alex Van Pelt. He got an OC job oh, with okay. the Patriots. So it's like some of the guys they wanted got other gigs, and I don't think teams. I don't think anyone's running to take a job on this staff when if they don't win, everyone's getting fired. You know, like yeah, they're true. like I was talking with someone over the weekend that works in the NFL, and you know this person is potentially looking for a new a new job. But there's only certain teams you want to go to if you're going to like leave a stable situation, even if it's a promotion, because you know you might get blown out of there if the team doesn't win. So like that's that's part of the process too. Yeah, and the the whole Keith Carter thing, um, I, I was, I think I think it was BS what he was saying. I mean, they they improved when Carter was there, and then uh, they went they went down when he left. I don't believe that, and that's that's all Derrick Henry and his progression and regression. I, yeah. I feel. You know, I mean, so that's like Salah trying to say, you know, the young players got better, like Brees and Garrett, like you, like that, like, like you somehow could point to them as like two young players who developed into like real. It's like stop it; they were stars the second they entered the NFL. Exactly, exactly. Well, I still think we should trade back and get Fatanu and then pick up a second rounder. But what do I know? I know Joe Milton sucks. That's all I know. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, have a good day, man. Uh, big fella, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. Uh, We'll get back to your calls and more of your Super Chats in a moment. Let's quickly pause. I want to tell you guys all about Roan Apparel. Let's talk about fashion and let's talk about how to upgrade your closet. I'm going to tell you about Roan Apparel. Roan stepped up to the challenge. Their commuter collection is the most comfortable, breathable, and truly versatile set of products known to man. They got products for every occasion. We're talking about the world's most comfortable pants, dress shirts, quarter zips, polos. The commuter collection from Roan can get you through any workday and straight into whatever comes next head to roan.com slash asmin and use promo code asmin to save 20 percent off your entire order that's 20 percent off your entire order when you head to r-h-o-n-e.com slash asmin when you look nice you feel nice once again upgrade your closet by heading over to roan.com and use promo code asmin at checkout so you can receive 20 percent off Check it out. Use that promo code. Upgrade your closet with Roan Apparel. More of your calls right now. Wavy Jets guy up next. What's up, Wavy? Yo, what up, Jake? How you been, man? What's up, man? How you been? I've been good. I've been good, man, staying out the way. But, yo, I got a couple of points I wanted to make. You know, the whole, uh, you know, back on the Zach Wilson stuff, again, it's like this dude's like the boogeyman. He just never goes away. Jeez. It's unreal. But, um, it's I mean, unreal. you know, they messed up he on the sticks. pick. It is what it is. But when he doubled down and tripled down on it, that's when it really got ugly. It was like at some point they should have just cut ties with the situation to begin with. And then uh, I was I was one of the Sam Donald guys. Not that I was saying like he was super talented, but I was like I knew the the hole that we could have got for moving down in the draft that year because you had you know Zach Wilson and all these guys. Look what the Forty ers gave up for Trey Lance, and they ain't even he gone. We would have got a couple of first-round picks. So we could have had Garrett, Brees, 
Jermaine Johnson plus two or three other people probably still would have been suffering at quarterback, but you know, it's all could have, could have, would have, should have at this point. You know, it's like we all over here crying over spilled milk. Like we at where we at now, you know. And I did want to uh, make one, one other yeah. point. That's uh, well said, Wavy. I mean, like, and like, who knows what would have happened if they had done that? Because they still would need a quarterback. And like, I bet you Jimmy Garoppolo would have been the quarterback then, right now. You know, they would have signed him right. after the 2021 season when it didn't work out with Darnold. You know what I mean? Like, that's where right. it was headed. And then you wouldn't have Rodgers right now. And I have no idea what they would be doing. Yeah, and one other point I wanted to make to you, because I know us Jets fans, we could get crazy and everything, but I've seen something on social media, man. I mean, this had to be the most far-out thing I've read in a while. So you know the whole Mac Jones getting traded to the Jaguars thing, right? So you know how we got the crazy Zach Wilson troopers? There was a guy in there that said Mac Jones will get the Jaguars to the Super Bowl, and the only reason he got traded is because Bill Belichick didn't like him. At that point, I said, okay, you know what, fans – they really put the fanatic in fit. <laughs> it's great. Mac Jones will take them to the Super Bowl. Wow. But, hey, man, good to see you again, bro. Take it easy, man. Wavy, good to hear from you. Thanks for calling. Yeah, that ain't going to happen. But I'll say this. Mac Jones at least put together a rookie year where he looked like a professional quarterback, so they were able to trade him in New England and get something. We don't have that with Zach, unfortunately. We don't. That's the problem. But Woody's trying to put the toothpaste back in the tube. It's over, Woody. He has no value. This ends with you probably having to cut him, unfortunately. Unfortunately. More of your calls right now. Jimmy from Seattle. What's up, Jimmy? Yo, J-E-T-S, just, just, just. Let's go. Hey, shout out King Loski. What's up, baby? Hey, man. Let it go. Y'all know what time it is. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. My boy, Jake, need y'all. Let's go. What's up, Jake? What's up? What's up? I love it, man. I love the passion. Hey, hey, got to bring, got to bring for you, man. Hey, man. Look, everybody on on, in the chat, they talking about that they know ball, bro. But why when we start talking ball, you really start seeing that people don't really know ball. They really (laughs) don't. Like, for instance, I'm having a conversation, right? We talking to I'm trying to gear it away from Gary's uh, little fiasco that he was talking about. <laughs> Joe Milton, come on, dog. Stop it. But what I will say is OBJ, right? I was talking about OBJ. OBJ wash versus the ones and twos of the cornerbacks of, uh, on every team, right? But as wide receiver three and four in certain concepts versus a dime corner, a nickel corner, he's not that washed. It all depends on how you use a player in the in the concepts of your scheme, correct? Yes or no? Right? Yeah, 100%. Absolutely. So what I don't understand is, like, everybody's going to, like, metrics. People are just going, oh, well, well, he this guy, talk, let's go back to Joe Milton and, and Zach Wilson, uh, they, he didn't have a game. They're not looking at just games on how they're doing. They're looking at certain throws, concepts that they have in their scheme. How good is he at making certain decisions in these concepts? Is it timely? Is he holding on to the ball? Is he holding on to the ball too long to where the he's getting sacked? Or is it because the wide receivers that they have are not getting open? Like people really need to start watching football and start understanding the actual concepts instead of just being fans. That's all I'm coming on here just to talk about. It's because, like, we talk about, we sit here and we talk about, oh, we know ball, we know this, we know that. But honestly, Jake, there's just a lot of fans. And, like, we go to that the casual fans and stuff like that. But I appreciate you. I hope that one day that you get, uh, I know you got a whole bunch of people in your roller decks that actually know ball to come on here and continuously teach ball because I'm tired of the chat saying that they know ball, but they do not. We got to get educated. <laughs> So we know that we cannot question Joe D and all these guys that have this as a profession that they do it 24 hours a day and you just do it three hours out of your day speaking as a casual fan. But other than that, Jake, I love you, dog. I love this program. You know I'm going to hop on. You know I'm going to get hyped. You know we're going to do what we got to do. Go Jets. And if you's a hater, gets to step in. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Watch the Jake Asman show, baby. I love it. Jimmy, thank you. Look, there's nothing wrong with being critical of your own team, being critical 
of Joe Douglas, Robert Sala, et cetera, they should be criticized. I think the frustration is when you have revisionist history on takes. Let's not act like the Jets were the only team that thought highly of Zach Wilson. That's ridiculous. And let's not pretend like if they had taken any of the other quarterbacks, they'd be in a better spot. Even if they traded Darnold or traded back and kept Darnold, I mean. They're not guaranteed to be in a better spot. You still need the sub quarterback. But fan is short for fanatic. You know, people are going to react the way they're going to react. And that's, that's just how it goes. Jack Gallo writes in, I'd like to see Zach with the 49ers letting Kyle Shanahan unlock, unlock him. Yeah, you know, the Niners could have Zach Wilson for nothing right now. They haven't acquired him. Why do you think that is, Jack? Why do you think that is, Jack? You tell me. And then you have the audacity to say Jake's hatred for Zach needs to be studied. I don't have a hatred for him. I have a hatred for you as a blind Zach Wilson truther, man. That's what I have a hatred for. Morons like you. That's my point. You Wilson truthers are losers. All of you. It's sad. It's pathetic. And I'm going to sit here and laugh. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. And may God have mercy on your soul. There's nothing to unlock. He is what he is. No one wants him. And we're going to act like Kyle Shanahan's going to unlock him. He couldn't fix Trey Lance. He traded up three first-round picks for him. I mean, it's it's just silly. I don't, I, and I really don't hate Zach Wilson. I like I, professionally. I wish him well, man. He's not a bad guy. I've defended him when people have said, "Oh, he's like Jamarcus Russell." Like Jamarcus Russell didn't care. He didn't study the playbook. There's a famous story of the Raiders sending him home with a pl- with a playbook on DVD, film to watch, and it was a it was a an empty DVD. And then they asked him the next day, hey, what did you think on film? Did you study? And he's giving them fake answers. And they gave him a fake dummy DVD, so they knew he was lying. Like, Zach Wilson works hard. Teammates like him. He's not a bad kid. He's just, unfortunately, not a good NFL quarterback. No one wants him. Why do you think that is, Wilson Truthers? You don't get it. He never will. Our offensive coordinator is on the Gus Buster hotline. I got time for three more calls, then we wrap. Edward, what's up? Edward? Edward, thank you for the time. Dirty, up next. What's up, Dirty? <laughs> hey. Um, so I uh, I watched the interview with Joe Douglas, and um, there's something that keeps coming to mind. You know how he keeps saying that there's flexibility, right? Which yeah. there is. We have we have a bunch of flexibility. And um, to, to our knowledge, he could take an offensive tackle. He could take a wide receiver. I, again, I still don't think he's going to go tight end. He just praised the entire tight end, uh, you know, space. But um, the one thing I remember him saying last year is that when he drafts a first-round pick, that that's going to be a starter. I remember them saying this last year. That is, that is like, that's your starter. That's your guy that you're going to have in there. He's going to – that's what they're looking at. And I'm starting to lean a little bit more towards a wide receiver, if that's the case. If Mike Williams is not going to be ready maybe for training camp or what have you, I'm kind of leaning more towards that way. Um, I mean, or they took Will McDonald last year, though. He wasn't a starter. I mean, he was in and out, right? I mean, that defense kind of, you know. Yeah, he, well, he, really, he didn't play a lot. He played he played in like less than like 15% of the snaps. Right. I mean – that's what – now I'm confused about it then, if you think about well, it. Well, it's right? semantics, I mean, man. I mean, it's, it's smokescreen season. He wants to give the illusion they're open to everything, which they might be. But I think deep down, if it was up to Joe, I, pre- I think if there's a the, – the offensive lineman he likes at 10, I think that's his pick. That's personally how I feel. I, I agree with you on that. I am leaning a little bit more towards wide receiver now. But um, I if there is a quarterback, like you said, if there is a quarterback that somebody wants to jump up and just grab because they need – um, that's that's our way to move down and get a second rounder. That's the easiest path to do it, Dirty. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, if Joe Douglas could trade back because somehow one of the top quarterbacks is there at 10, they, they could get a significant return. 
even if they're only moving back a few spots if the Raiders are coming up from 13 to 10, let's say. And I heard Antonio Pierce say that he thinks J.J. McCarthy is one of the three best quarterbacks in this year's draft. So maybe if McCarthy does somehow slip, he's there. Or maybe Pierce is saying that with the hope that May could fall to them. I don't know. But there's teams that need quarterbacks that are behind the Jets. If one of these guys does slip, maybe that's the path for Joe Douglas to pounce. And we, we can only hope that music comes on draft night. Charles writes in with a super chat. He says, Garrett Wilson said Zach has no touch. He's done. I don't remember when Garrett Wilson said this, so I'm not sure what you're referring to. Garrett Wilson's been pretty vocal about defending Zach. He's been a good teammate to him. Everyone's favorite, Zach Truther writes in, Jake, you have the biggest jet platform on YouTube, and you help devalue Zach with your consistent and unwarranted hatred for him. So thanks for costing us a six-round pick. You got to be one of the biggest morons on the planet, Hawk. We'll see you later. Goodbye. Into the shadow realm you go. I don't really look too much into like who we're going after and 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 all of this stuff. But as long as like we're not getting no Jets guys, like I'm good. Let's get this thing done. What you saying, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. It needs to be done. $500. The bounty is on Hawk, the king of the Zach Truthers in the YouTube space. Help me with my moving expenses. Send Hawk to the realm for life. <laughs> Two more calls, then we wrap. NY Jets Florida up next. What's up, NY Jets? That graphic, oh, uh, Jake, that graphic always makes me laugh out loud when I see it smacking the belly. That's just so, so damn funny. I can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't wait for uh, maybe week one, Jets-Bills. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Uh, one thing I could say, I actually took notes today because after the Jimmy and Gary calls, I had, all I have to say about that is uh, there is a full moon, okay, this time around. So um, I can understand a little bit of crazy takes, but let me say this about what Gary said. You know, Sam Darnold was so good enough to keep. How many teams has Sam Darnold been on now? He's making the rounds. In the NFL, what is he on Minnesota now? He tried San Francisco. So if Sam Darnold was a starter, he would have locked on somewhere at some point. Um, but my main point, Jake, is can we, as part of a trade down scenario, if a team is coming up for a quarterback, can we include Zach Wilson as a as a must part of that trade? I mean, a way to dump a salary because he's basically worth nothing. I I don't think. They could really attach him to any deal that would help them get something for him. You know, like I, what what team wants Zach Wilson? Like, well, that's well, that's what I'm saying though. What what if the Raiders? You mentioned the Raiders, and I'm thinking about that one. What if the Raiders want to come up for a quarterback that you say, hey man, you have to take Zach, and you know, I I'd be interested in Aiden O'Connell back. Aiden O'Connell, if the Jets did like him, he showed some something. He was why, a fourth rounder. It, it, but, why why would the Raiders want to do that though? Why wouldn't they just keep Aiden O'Connell and have him compete with a rookie? No, what I'm saying is if they're moving off of Aiden O'Connell and they want to draft, say, Bo Nix or somebody else, right? then they need to take Zach back and as a, as part of the deal. That why, they, that's part why, of why would the Jets want to do that? They would prefer just to get more draft capital than to – Well, no, I'm not saying – no, I'm saying in addition to the draft capital. He's a, he's a throw-in. Why, be, exactly. why would they, they they would say no thank you we'll just let's just do the deal with picks and you would say and joe would pick, pick out his balls and say no you take zach or and maybe we'll throw in a sixth I, I, that's not how trades work that's not gonna happen okay i, I okay i understand yeah i mean, look if, if we could just get rid of zach wilson sure but like that the raiders are will just say all right we're not gonna make that trade then no thank you and the Jets would be cutting off their nose despite the face because I'd rather make that trade with the Raiders if they're going to offer me uh, a second-round pick. I'll take a two to move back three spots if they're coming up for one of the quarterbacks. Neil, our final caller. Hello, Neil. Uh-oh. All right, baby. Let <laughs> me stop talking. Look at my phone, okay? You want to see my phone? We were having phone issues yesterday. Let me just hey, show you. You don't say. This this here, you see the crack on there? You see the crack? Oh, we see it. 
That's why it looks like you're like you're in like a smoke machine every time you call in from that. It, thing. The crack is right where the camera is. It's open. You see the opening there. <laughs> yes. Everything else on the phone. It's a it's a pretty new iPhone. It's more than a twelve or thirteen. I don't know what it is, but that I, what I did is I got up on my lounge, you know, off my my lounge chair, and it was underneath the lounge chair part, and it cracked right there on that spot. So I'll probably get it repaired, but you know. It is what it is. Just, is Bonesy around? I want Bonesy on here because I got this goat challenge. This shoe store goat challenge when Craig comes up from Australia. He called for it. So we're going to do it. Where's Bonesy? Get him on. <laughs> he's he's working. He, call, he called it earlier. We'll sit, Neil, we will set this up, but I don't have time this to is, orchestrate the wait, this shoe is the challenge. Goat, this is what it's going to happen. We're going to go to the store. Okay. And whoever is going to be at the dinner will come to the store, okay? We're going to shoot a video. Each of us gets a, we call it an up in the business. So each one of us gets an up, whoever comes in the shoe store. So I'll take the first up, then Bonesy, then me. Maybe his brother wants to take it up. And whoever sells the first pair of shoes that go to the register and pound it out, that's the winner. And we'll take little bets and it'll be, oh, it will be epic. It will be the funniest video you ever post. It will be so funny, right or wrong, Jake? How great would that be? It, it, it is. It is on the uh, short list of like top content we could produce with you. Oh my god! Maybe we'll ready. get Gator there. Whatever it is, it'll be fun. It will be pre-dinner, and then obviously we're gonna have nice video content with Craig at dinner. You know, eating his kangaroo and all this <laughs> other stuff. <laughs> And we'll have Rob. Jesus, I go out with Rob. He needs about six courses, Rob. He's a big eater, boy. He eats like wow. He's a monster. Well, but he might be. He might be the swing tackle this year. So we got to keep him in shape. I got to tell you, he could really be. A, he could really. You know what? I mean, obviously, he's a little there up in age. But I will say, if he was 30, 40 years old, I, 35. If he was. Um, uh, what's his name? Our left tackle last year's age. He would knock his ass right out of the box. No question about it. I would, I would be confident in that. Now, please, everybody, can we stop with Zach Wilson? He is not going to get us anything. He's useless as boobies on a bull. He's useless. All right? Let's focus on the draft. Let's focus on some free agents. You know, I really want to get some, a little more free agents, you know, into the mix here. I think we should at least have our running back two covered before the draft and, and the safety. You know, I, this guy Simmons is, is hanging around. He is ready for the plucking and he led the league in interceptions two years ago. And he's a, he's a hitter. He's a mauler. And you put him alongside of our other our, our other safety, the guy with, that from the Ravens. What's his name? Chuck Clark. Chuck Clark's a big hitter also. So we need hitters in there that could participate in the run game. Because when they got to the second level on us last year, Whitehead can't tackle. He puts his little shoulder in there, and they bounce right off him. They keep running. He's a shoulder tackler. He's too small. We have two monsters in there, and we have somebody that could – make interceptions on the back end because Whitehead can only intercept Josh Allen for some reason. He must talk to him before the game, tell him where he's throwing the ball. Other than that, he doesn't have any interceptions. Whitehead, I am so glad I'm rid of him. I don't want to see his face. I do not even want to talk about ZW any longer. That's I'm not even going to say his name. 13 he points made. I know. You want me to shut up and jump out this window? <sighs> <sighs> Love it, Neil. I got to run. I appreciate everyone. Please hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. We won't talk about ZW anymore. Neil said the magic words. So that is A-OK -okay for me as well. Everyone, thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section if you're not watching live. Your big takeaways from what Joe Douglas said. And is Woody Johnson trying to put the toothpaste back in the tube? Because it's not working. I'll talk to you guys soon. J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. The Jets are going to come back. No, they're not. They're, they're never going to come back. They're never going to come back.